Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is I, Deltree, and today we are beginning a brand new journey off into the wonderful world of Fire Emblem Awakening. So I've been getting requests for this game since... I don't know, since I started the channel, it pretty much feels like... And finally, at long last, we will be tackling this highly requested title. Now, in all honesty, I don't have as much history with this game as you might think. Uh, I already was pretty into the Fire Emblem series by the time this game came out. So unlike a lot of people, this was just kind of another game in the series for me in a lot of ways. Don't get me wrong, though. I had a lot of fun with this game when I played it. I, th I think I beat it in like a week, in fact. I was, I was way into it back in the day. And now I do see a lot more of the problems with it. I'm sure a lot of you guys, especially you guys who came in with this game, uh, would have a very similar experience as I did. I played it on hard mode the first time I played, and I thought that was pretty fun. Not too difficult, but just challenging enough to keep your attention, you know what I mean? I really liked a lot of the things that they tried to introduce as well. I always thought the pair-up system was cool in concept. Now, after like four games or so, I, I'm kind of hoping they move on to something else. But this was the game that first introduced it. And, I mean, let's be honest. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. If you're out there on the battlefield, right, and you see your buddy getting pounded by like six guys, are you just going to stand there or are you going to go lend him a hand? So I just, that was something about this game that I really liked. It just seems so logical. And how can I not mention the fact that Fire Emblem Awakening, like its history in so far as being a part of the series, right? It's really interesting to me because this was it, man. This was the last chance that Intelligent Systems had to turn this series around. The sales numbers were just too disappointing for Nintendo and they just went all in on this game, man. So no matter what I say <laughs> throughout this entire playthrough, I don't know, we're gonna see, you can see those sidebars so we already know what's going on here. Shoutouts Lozu, by the way, for coming through with these. Yeah, finally we can have a decent looking part one. <laughs> no matter how salty I may end up by the time all of this is done, just know right now that if this game weren't as good as it was, this series would be over. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. There's no way you can put a spin on that and make that not the case. And God, did this game become an overnight success. I'm still not entirely sure how or why. But it did. And that's just, it's incredible to me. It really is. And I, I can't help but appreciate the fact that this game got so many new faces into the series. People who oftentimes go back and play other games in the series. And support the older games as well. And I think that's so cool. I think that's so cool. I think this game did so many things right. It's really fun as a game. You know what I mean? I... I will say that I don't think it's the best Fire Emblem game, because when it comes to Fire Emblem right, a lot of the hardcore people are all about that strategy. And I'll be honest, I really wouldn't consider myself part of the hardcore crowd of Fire Emblem, not really. I mean, I play all of the games and stuff, but I don't... I, I don't know, man, I just... I I shy away from the title. Okay, there are reasons for that, but this is, this is a let's play, this isn't Deltre Speaks. At the end of the day, though, I do think that this is pretty good as an RPG. Maybe not the best strategy game of all time. Oh, I already deleted a save slot. Yeah, I have to figure something out because I'm also doing that Lunatic Plus livestream in in combination with this. So I'm, I'm kind of tight on save slots. I'm not really liking that too much. But we have delayed the inevitable for long enough. Yes, this is going to be on Lunatic. Now, if you... If you're watching the live stream, you might say, well, what's the difference then? Oh, there is a world of difference. There is a world of difference between Lunatic and Lunatic Plus. It's actually so huge that it would probably take an entire video just to explain that. But, needless to say, Lunatic is a lot more bearable. And I really didn't like Lunatic Mode in Awakening. Oh. Right, the old back pain slider. We can choose between small, medium, and large. Large, medium, small. Uh, we'll go with medium. Medium back pain. And we are going to be doing a girl because it makes Lucina really, really good. And I love me some Laura Bailey, so that's all I really... All the thought I put into that. Let's just put it that way. Girl looks like she just got out of bed. Alright, she's... <laughs> she woke up five minutes ago, and now she's here to take your life. So here we have Hey You, long lost relative to Sei Ri and Yen Fei. But unfortunately, she's an amnesiac, so she doesn't remember the relation. Uh, yes, proceed with that name. That sounds good to me. Just roll with my standard birthday, 1210. Shout out winter babies, and we are gonna go with plus magic minus luck. I think... We went with plus speed minus luck for the live stream. We'll go with plus magic. We'll see if... We'll see if this pays off or not. The thing is, right... 
speed in the early parts of the game is really nice because a lot of the enemies are incredibly dangerous and incredibly fast. This kind of goes back to what I was saying about Lunatic Mode. I didn't really like it a whole lot at first, and I still think it has a large number of issues. But, it's not so bad that you can't still have fun with it, is what I honestly believe. There are some really easy things that they could have done to make it more bearable, but they chose not to. I, I don't know why. <laughs> they fixed basically all of this with Fates, to Fates' credit. But, I think we should be good. Here comes Hey You, Goddess herself. Let's just get into it. We're gonna leave all of this stuff off. We don't need any of that. Let's go, Fire Emblem Awakening, the game that started it all. That is the first thing that I noticed about this game immediately the first time I played it. Compared to every it. other Our Fire Emblem battle. in the series, this was a huge step up in presentation in my opinion. I'm trying really hard to think of anything before this that's even close, and man, it's just, it's a blowout. It really is. It's really no wonder to me that people were so drawn to this title specifically. Because it just did so many of the obvious things that could have made this series stand out so much sooner, in my opinion. But as far as the presentation goes, Fire Emblem Awakening gets it right. Right off the bat, we're just thrown right into the action. Right into the action. It's a good hook, and I think it works. I think it works for this game. It stopped working like the third time they did this old premonition thing, but hey, this is it. Our final battle. You're one of us, hey you. And no destiny can change that. Now let's kill this dastard and be done with it. I agree, my man. So there is Krom. Oh good, they're gonna give me tutorials on lunatic mode. I just gotta say right now, if you've made it to lunatic mode and you still need these, you are probably dead. You're probably very dead. So, <laughs> instead I will go Listen through the tedious task of explaining all of this stuff to you, the viewer. Hey you, we have to get closer. Let's move. I agree. So what we're gonna do right here- Crop! Alright, my turn. So he's aware that this is a turn-based game. I like it, I like it. We're gonna pair the two, though. Got- Crop! Go ahead, hey you. Uh, that's what I was gonna do, man. So right there, I just paired the two units up. Now this is the first game to introduce that, and as you saw there, and as I will go into more detail with on the next map, it gives you a variety of bonuses, uh, namely hard stats, right? Hard stats. So like, Krom gives a bunch of speed, for example, that's his main thing. It's very... Uh, it's a very attractive quality that he has right off the bat because speed is so important in the early game. <laughs> Why do you resist? Because you're the bad guy, dude. Are you ready? Good. He's almost within reach. Let's move in and strike. Let us do exactly that. Now, Krom with the Silver Sword, if paired up with Robin here... Oh, uh, excuse me, if paired up with Hey You, can perfectly one-round Validar. Grima's truth, he said. Well, here's my truth. It's called the Silver Sword. Ha 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 ha! Fool, struggle all you want. You cannot unwrite that which is already written. But we shall do our best. Oh, jeez, Louise. Good dodge there, Grub. Sit down, kid. Ah, easiest map of all time. So, real talk, has anybody ever lost on this map? You can be honest with me. It's just me, your friend, Deltre. I won't judge you. Post in the comments if you lost on this map. <laughs> please, oh please, nobody post. the end of him. Thanks to you, we carried the day. We can rest easy now. At long last. What's wrong? Hey, hang on. This 
is not your... your fault. Promise me you'll escape from this place. Please. Go. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, I really enjoyed the beginning of this game because like I said, I think it gets your attention right away. And that's such a good thing. It's, you need something like that in order to encourage people to keep playing. My beef is that they decided to do it not once, not twice, but three times, three games in a row. Why? Why? And that's not spoiling anything. It's obviously different circumstances, different context in the next two games. But. Awakening started it, goddammit! Mom, we have to do something. What do you propose we do? Uh, I don't know. <sighs> I see you're awake now. Hey there. <laughs> there are better places to take a nap than on the ground, you know. <laughs> Give me your head. Ah, so here is Hey You. You all right? If it wasn't apparent, everything that happened in that prologue sequence is... It's like a vision, right? Or like a future premonition or something. Whatever you want to call it. That has not happened yet. And unlike with the live stream, we'll actually look at the story here. I, I really don't remember the story of Awakening very well, I have to be honest. It's been a very long time since I actually played and paid attention to the story. So I'm curious to see if I feel any different about it now than I did when I first played it. Because I, I had mixed feelings. I did have mixed feelings, but mostly I felt that it did its job fairly well. Uh, it hasn't gone off the rails yet. It most certainly will. Don't you worry. <laughs> Hopefully you're not seeing the, like, oh man, it's just another boring war story. No, 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 no. This game is on something, uh, some kind of substance, most likely one that is not legal. You all right. Thank you, Krom. Y yes, thank you, Krom. So I can't be the only one that thought that this game was going to be fully voice acted when I first heard the dialogue right I thought maybe some of it wouldn't be but then maybe the major cutscenes would be but they just have these little voice clips and that's something that I'm glad that they finally abandoned with echoes because man, it's just a little bit awkward sometimes you know what I mean just having those one or two word cut-ins like that and most of the time yeah they do a good job of matching it up with what they're saying but other times it just feels like they just picked any old voice clip man and with the way they are in this scene in particular, it almost feels like it was going to be all voice acted at first. And then they just had to cut it or something for budget reasons. I I couldn't even begin to guess, really. But it is a little bit disappointing. If there was one thing about the presentation of this game that I wish were different, it would be that. But this was their first attempt at this, so I'm not going to be too hard, you know. Ah, then you know who I am. Huh? Uh, no, actually, I... No, it's strange. Your name, it just came to me. Oh, she's... No, she seems like she, she would be really tired. She should probably sound very sleepy. No, actually, I... That's uh, strange. Your name. It just came to me. Yeah, something more like that. Hmm. Yes, the game does not have voice acting. However, I shall serenade you with my lovely voice. Don't you worry. Hmm, how curious. Tell me, what's your name? What brings you here? Um... Uh, my name is... Uh, it's... Huh. What? You don't know your own name. Hmm. I'm not sure if... I'm sorry, but where am I exactly? What? Hey, I've heard of this. It's called Amnesia. Very good, Lisa. Explain. It's called a load of Pegasus Dung. We're to believe you remember my lord's name, but not your own. Huh? But, but it's the truth. It's truly unbearable. I don't like her. You stop that now! What? I just said that I can hardly bear to think about the- STOP! <laughs> it's the truth. <sighs> What if it is true, Frederick? We can't just leave her here alone and confused. What sort of shepherds would we be then? Right. Just the same, my lord. I must emphasize caution. It would not do to let a wolf into our flock. And she keeps talking about bears. You know how I feel- right. Yes, we know, Frederick. Right then. We'll take her back to town and sort this out there. Uh, wait just a moment. Do I have a say in this? <sighs> Peace, Fred. I promise we'll heal all you have to say back in town. Now come. Seems like a nice enough group of people. And there's Lisa. Odin's mom! Oh, good. <laughs> At least he's not a main character in this game. Yeah, I said it! What's up? Odin is trash! Fight me! 
What will you do with me? Am I to be your prisoner? He's funny though, okay, fine. <laughs> I'll give you guys that. Haha. <laughs> You'll be free to go once we establish you're no enemy of Elise. Huh? Is that where we are, Elise? Ah. You've never heard of the Halodome. I feel like I should make a joke about Elise the male Knight Extraordinaire, but nothing is coming to mind. I'm sorry to let you down. Ha! Someone pay this actress. She plays quite the fool. The furled brow was especially convincing. You no good, dirty bear lover. It was one comment, Frederick. <laughs> Frederick, please. This land is known as the Halodome of Elise. A ruler emerald is called the Exalt. I suppose proper introductions are in order. My name is Krom, but then you already knew that. The delicate one here is my little sister, Lisa. I am not delicate. Hm. Ignore my brother, please. He can be a bit thick sometimes. But you're lucky the shepherds found you. Brigands would have been a rude awakening. <laughs> Alright, thanks everybody. That is my time. I hope that you enjoyed Smash Like if you did. <laughs> Damn it, Lisa! You're tearing me apart! Shepherds, you tend sheep. In full armor? I'm sorry, guys. I'm just listening to the music, honestly. I kind of forgot this, but Awakening does have a very good soundtrack. I have to be honest. My biggest beef with it is that I can never find any of the songs, ever, because their names are all really bad. <laughs> They're... Like, oh man, I wonder if I have the sound test available. If you look at the names of these soundtracks, good luck, man. Good luck finding the one that you want, because none of them make any amount of sense. <laughs> I know that this is for sure one of the id versions. I'm, I'm not sure which one it is, but this is like the most famous song from the game, probably. Or one of the most famous songs from the game. Shoot, it plays in Smash Brothers all the time. The original Fire Emblem game. So that must mean something. Huh, it's a dangerous job. Just ask Frederick the Wary here. Right. A title I shall wear with pride. Gods forbid one of us keeps an appropriate level of caution. I have every wish to trust you, stranger, but my station mandates otherwise. Yeah. I understand, sir. I would do no less myself. Do any of you have a hairbrush, by the way? No? Okay. My name is Hey You. I just remembered that. How odd. I suppose that's one mystery solved. Really? Hey you. Is that foreign? <laughs> well, yes, actually. My cousin Seiri. <laughs> ah, well. We can discuss it later. We're almost to town. Once we... Krom! Krom, look! The town! Oh no, not bandits! Who would have predicted it? In the first chapter of a Fire Emblem game, you say. Well, they're not from the mountains. So that's one step in the right direction. Truly a creative experience. This is why this game sold so well. They really broke the mold this time. <laughs> Damn it, the town is ablaze. Those blasted brigands, no doubt. Frederick, Lisa, quickly. My lord. What about her? <clears throat> Unless she's on fire as well, it can wait. <laughs> of course. Aptly put, my lord. <clears throat> Let's go already. I agree. Oh. Huh? But what about... Huh... And away we go. So you may notice that nobody in this game has feet. I am convinced that that is the reason that Corrin is barefoot in Fates. They just wanted to make damn sure that everybody was aware that they could animate it properly this time. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Intelligent Systems. <laughs> Get to it, lads. Grab anything shiny and put the rest to the torch. We got an example to set for these Elysian types. Ain't that right, lass? Stay away from me, please, someone help! Don't you worry, Robin is on the job. I mean, hey you. Krom, we have to stop them. Gods! Don't worry. After today, these bandits won't be bothering anyone ever again. That's a pretty safe bet. Frederick oh. Emblem, hype! Wait. <clears throat> hey you. You followed us, why? <clears throat> I... I'm not certain myself. But I'm armed, and I know... <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine waking up fully armed, ready for battle, and not having a damn clue why. That's gotta be a trip, I'll say that. And I know my way around to fight, if you'll have me. How does she know that? Of course, strength in numbers. Just stay close. Paired up, perhaps, even. Hmm. Shall we, then? Remember, hey you, we face practice thieves and murderers. They will grant us no quarter. It's kill or be killed. And he is not wrong. This is classic mode, after all. Which means that if we lose any of these characters, obviously they stay dead forever. Well, I say obviously. I don't know. Maybe you've never played Fire Emblem. But, 
it's permanent death. Now, a lot of people think that this was, in fact, the game that started the whole casual mode thing, but it was actually New Mister of the Emblem, so there you go. Score one for the old boys. Uh, what we want to do right here, though, is slow down for a second and actually talk about these guys a little bit, I think. Well, we can do both. At any rate, Frederick is the Jagan type character, a long-running archetype in the Fire Emblem series. These are, uh, they're typically characters who are of the Paladin class or like a, some kind of mounted unit, right? And they start far and away better than anybody else that you could have on your team. Frederick is no exception. The only thing with him is that... Uh, because Awakening is so gross oriented, he sort of has this issue where he falls off in the mid... Well, I would say not until like the final act of the game is he truly a bad unit. But he falls off harder than some of your other characters. Still one of the best units in the game by far because he is good for... I want to say 65-70% to 70 of the game. And while it's true he's not the best for the last 30%, let's not forget all the times he was putting in work now either. Needless to say, the beginning of this game would be nearly impossible without Frederick. If not entirely impossible. At least on lunatic mode at any rate. Uh, we also have Krom here, he's going to be the lord for this game. And as such it means that if Krom dies at any point, that's a game over right then and there. Fortunately Krom is not too bad. We'll see who's delicate. It's you Lisa, you cannot get into range of anybody, stop talking to smack. I may not be able to attack like Krom, but when you get injured, I'll be the one stitching your bones back together, care of my trusty staff. You just tell me where to go, hey you. Alright, you go right here, because unlike everything that she's saying, no, she's very delicate. Very, very delicate. I think everything on this map kills her, in fact. Yep, double, double to death. Double to death, right there. Nine speed is the magic number to kill Lisa, and everybody can do it. <laughs> so, uh, shut the hell up, Lisa, basically. Now... As I was starting to say, Krom is pretty decent. Not the best character in the game, but certainly not the worst. What sucks about Krom, though, is that... Because this is the game that introduces pair-ups, right? As you can see, he gets three speed right off the bat. And... That's no insignificant amount, by any stretch of the imagination. That's a very good deal of speed, especially on somebody like Frederick, who already has pretty solid base stats there with ten speed. Uh... The three speed from Krom, especially when support bonuses are in play, will boost him to a point where he's able to double things. Really? So, hey you, I see you wear a sword. Is it? Wait, is that a tome? You know magic? Yeah. I guess. I mean, I suppose I should check. Let's see. <laughs> Says E rank. Yes, I do. You, you believe so? E rank? Trash! But I'll just keep a few paces behind you for the time being. Um. No, I can control it, I'm sure. Now, how did this work again? Ah, yes. So, yes, Robin here, or Hey You, as it were. She can use both swords and tomes, but mainly tomes would be the draw there. Uh, back to Krom, though. Again, his, his main thing is that he doesn't have a whole lot of time to gain experience early on because he works so well as a parabot, and he also has this Dual Strike Plus, which gives him a 10% additional chance to get a dual attack if he's paired up with somebody. And that's going to come into play pretty early on. I want to say Chapter 2, that's pretty huge. Now, we have Freddy out here because he has the Silver Lance, and this is going to be enough damage to put one bandit in range for Robin, one in range for Krom. And he's going to kill the Myrmidon. We don't want anybody else to fight the Myrmidon because they all get doubled. I think even Krom gets doubled, so we, we have to avoid that. We have to let Freddy do it. It's the only way. And he's so strong that he just one-shots these guys outright. Look at that. Zero damage. Zero damage. And this is why Frederick is so good. His stats are just that much better than everybody else's, and he has an amazing weapon on top of that. Is anyone hurt? They would be foolish to leave a wound untreated. Oh. I agree. Indeed. Timely use of a staff or a vulnerary should prevent the worst. I agree. Couldn't have said it better myself, hey you. Now. Now, one other thing about Krom, I guess, is that he has this fellowship, and you may recognize that if you are an old boy. It's Mars weapon. This game has a lot of references, especially to the Arcania games. Uh, in fact, this whole place is supposed to be Arcania in the future, I do believe, so that makes perfect sense as to why Krom would have this. He's sort of a... Uh, he's like a distant relative to Marth. So that was something pretty cool I liked about this. There's lots of little nods to the previous games in the series, and this would be one of them. Uh, it is effective against dragons, as you might expect, but it's, it's pretty weak, all things considered. Only five might. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. That's only 15 damage against dragons, so that's not very amazing. Nothing particularly outstanding. But it can't break, so there's always that. 
Uh, with Krom, though, we can now have him go with this guy pretty safely. I could use the rapier, but I am... I'm really stingy. <laughs> this will probably end up getting me killed, no doubt. Now nah, we got this. We got this. Come on, now. So we can go in with Krom. Yeah, boy. Hopefully land this 83. Sweet. There we go. Finished. Yeah, I know, right? Already? That was pretty simple. Now... We can have Lisa go at Frederick right here. Heal him on up. Speaking of Lisa, she's okay. She's just a staff bot, really. She's just an early game healer. Not too much else to add about her, really. Just have her heal as much as possible so that she can level up. I usually don't get her up to level 20 or anything like that because it takes a really long time. Uh, of course, you could always just... You, you could basically quote-unquote grind her, I guess, if you just essentially beat a map, like get it down to the last enemy or whatever. And then have her heal everybody up. I don't usually do stuff like that. It's not really necessary. Even in a game like this where growths are pretty important. It's just, it's not something that's truly necessary in my opinion. But if you feel like you need the extra little boost, it's always something you can do. Uh, we'll just go ahead and use the bronze sword in all honesty. Of course, building up Hey Use Tome Rank would be really nice. Because tomes are a much, much, much better choice for her in the long term. Especially considering we went plus magic, right? So that only seems to make sense. But for the time being, we can just take this guy out with the bronze sword. No problem. Speaking of hey, you, she is super busted. Let me tell you. Robin is probably the most broken character in all of Fire Emblem history. <laughs> no lie. No lie. I'm Hopefully we can get a decent one today. I don't know if you guys saw that live stream or not, but good god, that was the worst Robin I've ever seen. And I'd really prefer not to have two terrible Robins that I have to deal with. One is enough, thank you. But, I mean, what can I really say? Her growth rates are out of this world crazy. And not only that, but she has this amazing veteran ability, which gives her 50% more experience if she is paired up with another unit. Which is just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And we're gonna have to take advantage of that quite a bit. Obviously, we weren't able to on that first round because we did need to kill those bandits. But, insofar as the future, it's something that we can definitely take advantage of. And we should be seeing some really good results with that if we play our cards correctly. 50% additional experience is no joke. And that really is the big thing that makes her so busted. So much to the point that they deliberately nerfed that ability in the next game down to only a 20% boost as opposed to a 50% boost. All you need to do is be paired up. That's the only condition. So, naturally, Robin gets a lot of levels, which means that she also gets more chances to get stats, which means she grows out of control very quickly, and it really is. It's a snowball effect, in every sense of the word. In every sense of the word. Uh, we're going to pair here you with Lisa now, because, again, we want to get that better and boost, if we can. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm still right here. Still with us, hey, you. Hmm, it's strange. Here on the battlefield, I can, well, I can see things. Like, you see that Myrmidon over there? Yes. He has an iron sword and 13 attack speed. What are you talking about? He's really dead. How do you know? Frederick. Ah. I see things. Like what? Hmm. The enemy's strength, their weaponry, the flow of battle. I must have studied this somewhere. Really? So you're saying you can size up the enemy at a glance? Really? Interesting. Yeah. Yes, it would seem so. And perhaps more if I apply myself. Perhaps indeed. Help it a touch. So it's basically explaining all of this. And if you really wanted to, you could obviously, uh, you, you can click these stats and they would give you a general rundown of what each of them do. Uh, strength, for example, affects your physical damage. This guy has an iron sword with nine strength. So he has 14 attack and he's getting an additional three from having a ranked swords. Now that's something that this game doesn't really explain very well. But depending on your mastery of a certain weapon type, you can get bonuses whenever you use said weapon types. This guy, again, he has A and Swords. And for having A and Swords, he gets three bonus damage, basically. And that's something that I wish this game would have explained a little bit better. I was, I remember being very confused about that the first times I was playing this. And, I mean, can you blame me? The game never really goes out of its way to explain that that is even a thing. Also, something else important to know about the weapon rank bonuses is that if you are at weapon triangle disadvantage, you actually lose all of those bonuses. So, even though that Myrmidon had 17 attack, if I use Frederick with his lance, the Myrmidon would, he would effectively have 14 attack. 
right? And that can be very confusing because the game doesn't actually draw any attention to that. But it is something to keep in mind. Listen. Are you alright, hey you? Don't rush into danger. Yeah. I'm fine, Krom. Don't worry. You should be talking to that Fred guy. You've lent us your strength and that makes you a friend. Having an ally by my side gives me courage. Well... Thank you. It gives me experience. But I think there's more to it than that. Hmm? What do you mean? Um... I believe there's a tactical advantage to fighting side by side. It's fuzzy. Wait, yes. Working in pairs improves strength, defense, speed. Yes, yes, I'm sure of it. I don't know, sounds like bullshit to me. <laughs> but she's not wrong. Uh, that's the game's way of sort of introducing the pair-up feature. And uh, it is very important to actually understand that for this game in particular, especially the stat-boosting aspect of it, I wanted to say, because enemies in this game have very high stats. But if you use the pair-up feature intelligently, you can counteract that stat advantage that they have by boosting your own stats through the roof. So for example, if I was a few points away from doubling somebody, I could pair Krom up with them. Give myself the speed the Krom grants. Yes. No, no, computer. <laughs> Sorry. But you see what I'm saying? I could pair myself up with Krom. Get the speed boost. Oh, uh, now, dang it, why didn't I take the old bronze sword? I wanted to give that to Fred right there. Because I'm pretty sure that six... Plus, no, oh, he lives, he lives. Because in all honesty, I think the smartest thing I could do is let this guy kill himself on Robin, yeah? I keep calling her Robin. This is Hey You. I shall let this guy kill himself on Hey You. And I don't want to attack this guy, obviously. We're just gonna stay right inside of his range. Krom, get out of there. Krom will have more than enough time to uh, build himself up, so to speak. Now, unless Freddy Boy gets 8% in here, here, Shibi Shibi, come to the slaughter. Odd choice of final words, but hey, to each their own. So Fred's gonna do a billy to that guy. He's gonna do a straight up million damage to that guy. This guy's gonna get murked by Robin, which is exactly what we wanted to see. We survive easily, so even if we miss, it's not the end of the world. Obviously, it's preferable to put him into the dirt like that. Right. And this is what you want to do with Robin early on. You want to funnel as much EXP into her as possible. Well... <laughs> She got defense. That's all I can say, really. I wouldn't necessarily call that progress a level up without magic or speed or really anything that's useful. Is uh, It's questionable, to say the least. Most certainly. Uh, that said, though, we do want to funnel more into Robin. Now, there are those sparkly tiles on the map that you're seeing right here. And these are special event tiles. They can either give you an item. Uh, they can boost your support with a paired up unit. So if I have Robin and Lisa stand over there, for example, it may boost their support level. One, two, three, four, five. No. Sorry, I'm just trying to... I want to be able to put Krom somewhere that he can pair up with Lisa so that he can attack this guy. Uh, and then I can have Robin kill them, basically. But yeah, there's a few different outcomes. You can gain some experience, some weapon proficiency, find an item, gain some board points. I think those are the major ones. I could be forgetting something if I am, feel free to correct me, but... They're nice little bonuses, but I don't like to count on them because they are entirely random. Uh, at this point, I want to get a Vulnerary over to Fred, just for the hell of it, really. I'm not going to use it. I'm definitely not going to use it, but... Yeah, so what, what we're going to do... We'll pair you two together. Krom can now attack. Putting this guy well within range to get rocked by Robin, hopefully. And I'm gonna pair Fred up with her so that we get the 50% boost and hopefully get another level up. And that really is the main thing that I'm trying to do right now, just power level Robin, because the faster she becomes a good unit, the faster we can start messing around, basically. <laughs> and that, it's kind of funny to say it like that, but that's exactly how this game works, honestly. If I want to mess around with other characters, it really helps to have somebody who just stands so far above the rest. And Hey You here is a prime example of that. So we take this guy out easily with Freddy support. Bleh! Bleh. And hopefully that's going to be a level up or very close to. Oh my lord, you hate to see that happen. You really do. You really do. <laughs> well, that's the end of that. Lucky for the town, we were close by. 
But holy wow, hey you! <laughs> Lisa, please! Is there any doubt in your mind as to why Odin is the way he is? Just look at this girl. You are incredible. Sword, sorcery, and tactics. Is there anything you can't do? Well, I can't level up my speed, apparently. Right. Ah, uh, you're certainly no helpless victim. That much is for sure. Right. Indeed. Perhaps you might even be capable of an explanation for how you came here. Um... I understand your skepticism, Sir Frederick. And I cannot explain why only some knowledge has returned to me. But please believe me. I have shared all that I know. Hmm. You fought to save Elysian lives. My heart says that's enough. My lord. And your mind, my lord. Will you not heed its counsel as well? It's alright. Frederick, the shepherds could use someone with hey use talents. We brigands and unruly neighbors, all looking to bloody our soil. Would you really have us lose such an able tactician? Besides, I believe her story, odd as it may be. Oh. Thank you, Krom. Listen. So, how about it? Will you join us, hey you? Yeah. I would be honored. I'm so excited. <laughs> ah, so a job well done. Not too bad, guys. Not too bad. <sighs> Did you notice, my lord? The brigand spoke with a Plegian accent. Huh? Plegian? What's that? God, she knows nothing! You fool, hey you! Plegia is Elise's westerly neighbor. They send small bands into our territory, hoping to instigate a war. And it's the poor townsfolk who suffer. Totally innocent and totally helpless. Really? They do have us, milady. Shepherds to protect the town. Do not be swept up in your anger. It will cloud your judgment. Thank you, Fred. I know, I know. Right. Don't worry, I'll get used to all this. <sighs> My lord, please, you must stay the night. We are simple folk of simple maids, but we would gladly toast to your valor with a feast. Oh, thanks, man. My thanks. A most generous offer, sir, and no doubt your hospitality would be grand. But I'm afraid we must hurry back to Alistol. Dark meat only for me. Medium well, and no salt in the soup. I simply... Wait, no, Fred, shut the... F shut up! <laughs> Wait, what? We're not staying. But Frederick, it's nearly dark. <laughs> when night falls, we'll camp. Eat off the land, make our bed of twigs and the like. I believe you mentioned you would be getting used to this. Hmm? What? Frederick, sometimes I hate you. <laughs> I will say the dialogue in this game is pretty charming. I can't really think of too much to complain about with that. You've quite the stern lieutenant there. Yeah, well, stern is one name for it. I would have went with asshole, but I can, yeah, I can think of a few others. You dick. <sighs> Frederick only smiles when he's about to bring down the axe. But he only came with the lance. Duly noted. Ahem, you do realize I'm still present. Oh, we realize. I just don't care. Ah, <laughs> uh, you are fun, Grom. Shall we then? The Lord remains as amusing as ever. Now then, shall we be going? Hmm. All right, all right. Ready to go, hey you. The capital isn't far. But... Wait, how long has it been? Hold on now. Probably not that long. I say we can sneak in chapter one as well. Oh yeah, 40 minutes? Psh, easy, easy street. This right here is the game that brought back the world map feature. And I have mixed feelings on it, honestly. It mostly works out. My only beef with it is that sometimes randoms will show up on the one shop that you wanted to go to so bad. You know what I mean? I know that everybody who has played this game has had this experience, so I'm probably preaching to the choir here. But eventually... There will be map spawns, okay, that show up on places that you've already been. And that's important because you can actually visit a lot of these places to buy items, forge weapons, things like that. There will be special deals at certain places for a limited time. But for some reason, there's no way to negate map spawns that show up on these places. And on lunatic mode, they are damn near unbeatable. They're like, they're nearly unbeatable. Random battles on lunatic are useless because the only people that can actually do anything in a random battle are your strongest units and you don't really care about grinding your strongest units because they are your strongest it's your weaklings that you care about but you can't really do anything with the random fights you know what I mean and I I don't know I feel like it's kind of scummy in a way because it almost feels like it was intended to sell you the grinding DLC and I don't know if I really appreciate that their intelligence systems but hey we're not gonna be grinding for this playthrough uh, the only time I will take any kind of battle is if, again, it's one of those situations where the 
the encounter ends up on somewhere that I absolutely need to shop at. That would be the only time that I would do it. Just to add to the challenge a little bit, I guess. I don't know. Never really been a big grinder, I'll be honest. Moving on, chapter one. Unwelcome change. Now, it's really hard to believe that a lot of games prior to this point didn't really do any kind of cutscenes like this. It was all static backgrounds and whatnot. There was no models or anything like that. And as somebody who had played a lot of the games previously, like before playing this one, it, it really did stand out to me a whole lot. It stood out to me that they were really trying to make this feel more... more modern, I guess, for lack of a better word. Because I, I as much as I love the older games, right... There's really no denying that the presentation is just dated in so many ways. And I know, I know, oh, it's a strategy game, Delta. Yeah, you know what? Shut up! Shut up, you! <laughs> I don't want to hear it. It still should look presentable, I think. And there was really no excuse for it to not. Don't get me wrong, the old games got the job done. But it was really a nice step in the right direction, I feel, when it comes to Awakening. Oh, and I'm definitely not smack-talking the CG artwork in the previous games. No, no, no. Those are very good. Those are very good. But you you still get that and more in this game. So, honestly, honestly, this is only a positive, in my opinion. I told you, it's getting dark already. Yeah, and now the bugs are out. Noisy, disgusting bugs that buzz around and crawl all over you and bite you in. Ah, one call in my mouth. Blah, blah. All right, so Lisa's pretty great. <laughs> I don't know if she's top 10 waifus or not, but she's pretty great. <laughs> this whole family is messed up. Don't even get me started on a Wayne, man. Don't even do it. I could write a whole essay about that kid. I really could. Oh my god, I just realized that Ophelia is technically Elysian royalty, huh? Huh. <laughs> Aw, oh, come on now, Lisa. Hardship builds character. Want to help me gather firewood? <laughs> Yuck. I think I swallowed it. I'll pass on finding firewood, thanks. I think I built quite enough character for one day. <laughs> so goofy, man. Oh, we should probably think about food. I don't know about you, but I'm starving. I could go for some nice bear meat. <sighs> Frederick's over there in the corner just... Quietly fuming. Well, yes, I should. I should think a little hunting and gathering is in order. Now, who wants to clear a campfire? Not I. Nose goes. You uh, <laughs> you enjoying your meal there, Robin? <laughs> what is she even eating? You can hardly see. Is there something in her hands? Is it supposed to be like? I, I don't know. I don't know. They couldn't even animate the food? No, I take it all back. I take it all back. This is the laziest, most poorly thought out presented <laughs> piece of garbage media that I've ever... <laughs> oh, I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, it's been too long since I last had bear meat. Delicious. What's wrong, Lisa? Dig in. Pass. Gods. Couldn't you spear us an animal normal people eat for once? I mean, come on, who eats bear? I agree completely. Thank you, Frederick. You're meddling with the food chain. Right, hey you? Uh, hey you. Nom nom nom. Oh, this is the best. Huh? I suppose a person would enjoy just about anything after not eating for days, so how long were we out in that field anyways? <laughs> just eat it, Lisa. Meat is meat. It builds character. Since when does meat smell like old boots? Way to take that back. Boots smell better. Right. Every experience makes us stronger, milady. Even those we don't enjoy. Really? Then why don't I see you eating, Frederick? <laughs> oh, me? Well, uh... Uh... This is awkward. Oh, well, I'm not hungry. I... I had a large lunch. Yes, quite. Hey. Yeah, right, Frederick. Got him. It's a very charming game. Huh? God, you guys didn't even put the campfire out? 
That's a fire hazard, I'll have you know. <sighs> What's wrong, big brother? Forgive me. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you, but something is amiss. Huh? Define something, everything. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think I'll have a look around. <clears throat> not alone, you won't. I'm coming too. Huh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Lisa. I don't know what good she's gonna do. Yes, stay back. I have my staff. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not a weapon type, but honestly, they've tried that before in Radiant Dawn, and it's the funniest thing in the world seeing healers try to bop people with their heal staves and crap. But I'm thinking like legitimate staves or like legitimate stabs, you know, like martial arts. That'd be kind of cool to see, like a bow staff. You know what I mean? It sure is dark and quiet. Where did the birds go? Something is wrong here. Brilliant observation, Grom. Ah, Grom! Gods, what? What is this madness? Lisa, stay close. Lisa, run. I mean it. Go! Stand back. Quite an entrance. What's your name? See, now this is exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly what I'm talking about. I, I don't know why I'm slamming my <laughs> workstation today. But seriously, this is... This is what I really always kind of wanted from these Fire Emblem games, right? They have such a strong hook with this game. It's just action, action, action right off the bat. What was Krom doing though? I have to say that, I can't be the only one thinking it. Why on earth did somebody need to tell Krom to help out with that situation? I I don't understand. Krom, what are you doing? You're supposed to be the cool guy here. I saw you're gonna act, man. No wonder it took them five games to put you in Smash, okay? Yeah, sure, you could say, but Dotra, he didn't exist during Smash 64 and Melee. I don't wanna hear it! Excuses! Okay, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I guess I just, this game just hypes me up, man. My lord, my lady, are you hurt? Frederick, hey you! Yes, that is my name. No, I mean, hey you! <laughs> what? Are such horrific creatures commonplace in this land? No. They're not from Elise, I promise you that. Well then where, Krom? No one is injured then, thank the gods. Mm -hmm. The masked man who saved me, if it wasn't for him, I'd be... Hey, where did he go? 
Right. We can worry about him later, after we put these things to the blade. Eyes open now. We know nothing about this enemy. Yes. Right. Agreed. So, naturally, Frederick runs to the back lines. God damn it, why? Hmm, are those... Right. Abandoned forts, yes. I see. Then we should take shelter in them whenever possible. No doubt they will offer distinct advantages in battle. My visions are telling me 2 defense, 20 avoid, and 20% healing at the beginning of every turn. Wow, truly an incredible observation, hey you. Was that, was that correct? Yeah, it was. Okay, cool. So, the thing with this map, right? We got another route map on our hands. Get used to those. And the enemies are quite powerful, as they have been for really the entire game so far. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the prologue, pretty easy and everything, but these guys will mess you up if you're not paying attention. And enemies on this map are absolutely no exception to that rule. Now, down here is the fabled hammer, bro. There's nothing I can really do about this guy other than hope that Fred dodges. And that's just the sad reality of this map because, quite frankly, these guys are much too powerful. They're incredibly powerful. I can't afford to have anybody but Fred in range of more than one enemy at a time because if I do, they will get two at KO'd. God forbid Hey Yu is attacked by this mercenary who can outright one round KO her because she, uh, she is doubled. She is doubled by these guys. Which is why early speed is going to be so important. I can't believe we didn't get any speed or any magic or anything good, but hey. We'll do what we can. Now at this point, because we do definitely need Frederick to thin their numbers a little bit, we're going to give the bronze sword on over to him. Pair him with Krom. And Krom can move right here. Equip Fred with the bronze sword. And this is usually how I like to handle this map because, honestly, there's not a whole lot you can really not a whole lot you can really do about these guys sadly you just have to sort of take them as they come now if I if I were thinking about it a little bit harder I probably would have unpaired not unpaired but I would have unequipped Krom I think because <sighs> yeah I guess Freddy doubles these guys and it would be better if it would be better if Robin it would be better if hey you got the kill basically I'll stop calling a Robin. I don't even know any Robins, so that is pretty strange. Now, hopefully, Krom does not get the double attack here. It is it is chance based in this game. Oh, of course he does. Of course he does, Krom. <sighs> yeah, that is a little bit unfortunate. Ever so slightly. Now, if he wants to double attack this guy, that would have been fine. But no, of course not. Well, I'll tell you what I can do. I can actually just attack him with Fred. No speed, unfortunate. Unfortunate. Speed is just such an important stat in this game, unfortunately. Uh, I can't attack that mercenary using uh, Fred, though. And that will hopefully allow Hey You to get a kill. It is going to be a bit of a risk, I won't lie. But I think that I really want that experience on her. Captain Krom, wait, I'm coming. Nah, I knew I shouldn't have left it to them. Alright, you ash-faced leather freaks. Which one of you wants to try my lance on for size first? None of them, because they're all gonna kill you, Sully. I know just the spot for it. Shoved right up your ass! That's right! <laughs> Hold! Hold, milady! Oh, this clown! Muh? Life may be long, but attraction is fleeting. Would you leave me in your sweet dust? Leave war to the warriors, dear bird. A beauty such as you need wage only love. What in the... The hell are you on? Oh. Huh, is the lady intrigued? Of course you are, it's only natural. I am myth and legend. I am he who strides large across history's greatest stage. The man who puts the arch in archer. My name, dear lady, is Vi... <sighs> Sorry, Ruffles, no time for this. Onward! Wait! Virion! Uh, my name. It's it's Virion. W wait, where are you going? Shut the hell up, Virion! Pray, at least tell me your name. I'm Sully. I'm Sully, and I'm a shepherd. Yes, yes. Sully, how divine! A starkly beautiful name as befits its owner, truly. Will you marry me, my dearest Sully? I feel like that's more appropriate, yeah. Will I what now? Oh, wait, I get it. This is a joke, and when I put my boot through your ass... <laughs> that's the punchline! No, please, I'm very sensitive. So I gotta say that some of the some of the designs for these characters are a little bit weird. Like what is Sully wearing, for example? What is that? What is that supposed to be? It looks like 
It looks like a toilet, like, just attached to the rest of her armor. And I know that's like the obvious joke, but it really does. It honest to God does. And don't even get me started on Virion over here. Prissy boy with his cravat. Why? Thinking he's all fancy? He, he thinks he levitates above the rest of you. I just want you to know that. I realize my manly figure and noble bearing can be overwhelming. Tis common. So please, don't feel pressure to answer right away. How's this for an answer? Oh, the goodness. But those shapely legs certainly can kick, can't they? I like that little sneak compliment. He got he had to get that in there. But please, milady, allow me to accompany you at least. Mine is a cold, empty world without you. I shall be your most willing servant, and you in turn will give my life purpose. Ah, <sighs> <sighs> fine. Anything to shut you up. What? Stop staring at me like that. I'm with Sully on this one. You gotta go, Virion. You have got to go. Ah, but you know what? I've just realized. Because Fred got that point of strength, now he murders this guy. And I don't have... There's no way that... Hey, you... Nah, not a chance. Not a chance. And Freddy will run around this guy, no doubt. Yeah, he does, easily. Damn, dude. That's experience wasted. Well, maybe... Do you think that Sully Virion... Hey, you can combine on this guy? Because maybe they can. If I put her on the forest, that's seven. Uh, Viria! Goddesses and gentlemen, may I have your attention? Hi, as it happens, I'm an archer. The archest of archers, in fact. The archest of archers, in fact. Okay. As such, I attack most effectively from a distance. So kindly give me one step away from peril, if you would. So I'm thinking we use Virion as a meat shield. <laughs> no, I'm just messing. Uh... But real talk, though, I think if I throw Sully right here, she will survive thanks to the wood defense boost. And because... Yeah, because Freddy's going to murder all of these guys, and I cannot avoid that at all in any meaningful way, I think that it would be to my best interest to... try and bait that mercenary. Just to get a little bit more experience on other characters. Because, again, reality dictates that Frederick has to do a lot of work early on. Later on, this is not as big of an issue, but I can't put anybody else in range of these guys. And... Uh, because they all get two and killed, right? So I can't put them in range of more than one enemy at a time. And they also aren't strong enough to 1v1 an enemy on their own. So the only real way to accomplish much with the rest of your characters is to combine a whole bunch... Which, I don't necessarily have a problem with that in itself. I just think that it's a little bit extreme. I don't know, man. I don't know if it should necessarily take me four guys to kill this one mercenary. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And, you know, I just realized that Sully can't really chip in. So, it's going to have to be Sully who gets this kill. Unfortunately, because... Well, quite frankly, she's not going to be able to attack this guy, right? She's going to get hit right here. And that's going to leave her so low that if she chooses to attack the mercenary again, even if... Oh, good God, Fred. <laughs> he threw me off. Even if I heal her, she will not be able to survive a second round with the mercenary, though, basically. Which means she's going to have to be the one to get the kill, more likely than not. Unless she gets a dodge or something, but I'm not really counting on it. I'll say that right now. It also is a good idea to have Frederick do some of the heavy lifting with Krom in his back pocket like this anyways because you can build up their support ranks pretty easily early on by doing that. And Krom gives more speed as you level up supports with him. So right now we have no support level so he only gives 3 speed but if I get up to C rank then he'll start giving 4 speed for example. Oh there's no chance we dodge. There's no chance in hell that we dodge. Honestly, though, we might be able to kill him with, uh, hey you, maybe. Why? Oh, because he has that annoying ability. So here's something that I, I didn't really care for with, uh, Awakening specifically. The enemies have random abilities, and you'll notice that 
the creators of this game didn't care for abilities like this either because they stopped existing in Fates. But this mercenary has this patience ability which just gives him 10 hit avoid when he is being attacked. I, I don't care for randomness like that personally. It is just one extra layer of annoyance, kind of, because now I can't really do a whole lot with Hey You here. I mean, if I'm standing next to Sully, there's nine. I mean, technically, I think I actually think I have to do this, don't I? Oh no, I think I have to make that move. I genuinely think that I do. Well, <laughs> man, the early game dilemma. The early game dilemma back at it again with full force. But it does help to stand adjacent to characters when you can, because as you saw right there with Virion, he was getting 10% extra hit. And by pairing these two like so and standing right about here, we should still have, yeah, 68. That's as good as it's gonna get, sadly. Uh, Virion definitely gets one rounded. Freddy is much too far away. Freddy was always too far away, though. He couldn't pair with anybody. So I couldn't really use him to save this even had I wanted to. Nah, there's no saving this, huh? We just we just have to do this. We just have to do this. And to be fair, 78 wouldn't be the greatest thing in the world either, but... I mean, what can we do? What can we do? Honestly. He's just gotta die. Of course, I could've just let him go over to Fred, but I'm greedy. Oh, we got it. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, I'm just a little bit greedy. That's just how it is. I'll take that level up, though. Please do well this time. That's all I'm asking for here, man. Thank you. Oh, she's getting kind of bulky. Hell yeah. And I'm realizing very, very quickly that, again, one of the most important things you can do with this game is make sure you're distributing that experience favorably. Now, we didn't actually get any speed on Fred yet, so it's going to be a little bit harder to take some of these guys out here. Uh... If I can somehow avoid killing this guy, I can use Krom. That could be a kill for Krom. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try for a kill on Krom. I'm going to unequip this guy right now. Go in with the bronze sword. And I, I unequip so that Krom can actually get the killing blow, as opposed to doing it through a dual strike. Because he'll get more experience this way, basically. I don't know if I'm necessarily trying to train Krom like that, but I want him to be good enough for uh, a certain other character to have some decent base stats later on, let's say. Ah, uh, there's that compelling dialogue that Awakening fans love. I assume. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. But now Krom can easily kill this guy. Easily, I say. Yeah, I, I have really no doubt that he can. We don't need you on at this point. We'll use the rapier for the accuracy. And Krom can easily take a hit. Easily take a hit. I say that, but now I'm shook. As I say, he can easily take a hit. Uh, 99% of the time, anyways. And we can get this experience on your boy right now. He's not as necessary to level up as a lot of people might think, but having a good Krom can never really hurt, in my opinion. Right. So that's 33 points for him right there. And I would kind of like to draw these guys away, I think. So if I move Hey You over here, well, you know, I'm not sure. Will they attack Hey You or will they attack Rob? This is as good as time as any to figure out how this works. Because in some games, right, the enemy really only cares about how much damage they're doing. And I'm not entirely sure if this is one of those cases. It actually is, so they're going to attack Heyu despite the fact that she can retaliate right now. And we can do a lot of damage to this guy. We can do so much damage to this guy. And we can in fact take him out with her on this next go. Which is exactly what we're going to do. So we use Lisa, bring ourselves back a little bit. Yeah, her healing is very, very weak at this point. Not really a whole lot we can do about that, sadly. But a good old steel, uh, not steel, but silver lance to the jaw. And again, we're going to unequip Krom at this point because he will probably dual attack and screw me. But we can do one of these moves right here. And that's 21 damage, hopefully. If not, I probably lose. <laughs> Actually, yeah. 
That was a little risky. Okay, I admit it. I don't want to hear anybody say I'm bad at this game. And we can move right here. I mean, I could probably have Virion shoot just for experience. I will. Yeah, I'll do it. I don't know. I don't usually use Virion. My big thing with him... Oh, I didn't even talk about our new recruits. Now, did I? So we have Sully, who's in the back. She is probably the best Cavalier to train from scratch. Because she has a much better speed base. And that is important because enemies on Lunatic especially will already be doubling the next Cavalier that we obtain uh, on the next map, that is. The second Cavalier gets doubled by Nepal, and that really, really hurts him defensively. Sully, on the other hand, while she doesn't have as much raw durability as her alternative, she does have enough speed to prevent the double attack, which effectively does make her bulkier. Because she's only taking half the damage that her competition would. Of course, they can both grow out of this. Sully can grow very well durability-wise. And the other guy can grow much better speed-wise, eventually. Eventually. But, he starts in such a big hole when it comes to speed that you're really relying on his growth. Whereas Soli at least starts fast enough that she's not getting rocked by every other enemy. And has a chance to earn a lot more experience as a result. Now she has Discipline, which doubles the amount of weapon experience the unit receives. Frederick also has this ability. And he also has Outdoor Fighter, plus 10 Hidden Avoid when fighting outdoors. I assume that a map like this would count. It's not very clear, I'll be honest. And number 2 over here, we have Virion. Not a very good unit at all. Like, at all. But, he does have bows, which, with enemies as strong as they are, kind of can be nice occasionally. It does mean, however, that he doesn't have a particularly great enemy phase, of course, because he can't retaliate a melee, which is so huge. And enemies are not afraid to take advantage of that at all. So keep that in mind if you wanted to use Virion for some reason. I'm sure his growth rates are on screen right now. They're not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but he starts in such a big hole when it comes to his speed that he really has to spend the entire game trying to work out of this. Like, look at that. Five base speed. Five. Sure, you could give him a speed boosting, stat booster, or something, but man. To have to use a stat booster to just be decent? I don't know, man. I would much rather use a stat booster to become good, you know what I mean? If, if I had one speed wing to use, who am I going to use it on? Am I going to use it on Hey You so that she doubles everything? Or am I going to use it on Virion so that he stops being doubled by everything? You know? So, I don't think he's very good. He doesn't do a particularly great amount of damage, although he's not horrible. Uh... In some respects, for example, the fact that he uses bows gives him an early way to deal effective damage against flying enemies, which may or may not come into play. I guess we'll just have to see. Blah! Down he goes, level 4, hype! Speed magic, defense. Why? Who did I piss off? Why are my robins all so bad? I don't understand. Stop getting strength, I don't care about strength. Why did you level luck? You have a luck bane. I'm not salty. <laughs> Why would you say that? Stop accusing me. Oh, what do you dream about? I dream that you level up decently. <laughs> hey, you and Sully's relationship improved. So there was one of those uh, special event tiles we saw right there. And in that case, we got a support bonus. It could have been anything. Now, obviously, you do have to be paired up to get the support bonus effect, but... Like I say, it can be a wide variety of things. Some of the items you can get from them are actually very crazy. I guess we'll see if we can't get some of them. When I was playing this uh, on my other DS, I guess, I ended up getting like three of versus knights and that pissed me off because that's one of the best items that you could possibly get. And naturally, we will never see any of that now that I'm recording. <laughs> I assure you. But it's essentially the best tome in the game. And you can only really get it from those random finds, as I recall. So don't write off the items you can get through that. They're actually quite good. Only issue is that, again, they are random. Seems all the creatures are vanquished. This young man took care of the others. So do you want to join me or what? Um, I never got to thank you for before. So, thank you. You're very brave. Thank you. You've saved my sister's life. My name is Krom. Might I ask yours? You may call me Marth. You may call me Marth. How do I, how do I do a, hmm, spoilers I guess, how do I, how do I make this sound? 
Yeah, I, I actually think that kind of worked, right? You may call me Marth. Really? Marth, after the heroic king of old. You certainly fight like a hero. Where did you learn your way with the sword? No. I'm not here to talk about me. This world teeters on the brink of a horrible calamity. What you saw tonight was but a prelude. Yeah, because that was kind of like the Barth voice that I used for the playthrough, right? For the uh, new mystery playthrough, but it's also more girly, I guess? I, I don't know. You have been warned. Whatever, man, I'm rolling with that. Huh? What's teetering where now? Hey, wait! <sighs> Not much for conversation, is he? Right. It appears his skills lie elsewhere. I wager we'll hear his name again. But for now, I'm more concerned about the capital. We should make haste. I agree, Freddy. I agree. And with that, we are going to call it here. So right off the bat, lots of exciting developments. We join our heroes in a world on the brink of destruction, as Marth would tell us. I'm sure there's more to that. He seems like he shows up in an awful lot of these Fire Emblem games. I don't know. How many games does that make now? Seven or eight games featuring Marth? It's pretty crazy when you think about it. But I do, I, I really do. I enjoy the fact that this game doesn't waste any time getting you right into the action. It's a good hook, it's a good draw. It's hard for me to say that I don't understand why people would enjoy this game and get invested in it. And we haven't even gotten to the best part of it yet. No, 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 waifus, man, waifus! Alright, top 10 waifus in the comment section below. And, uh, <laughs> oh, man, this is gonna be a fun playthrough, I can feel it. See you guys on the next one. Peace.